and welcome to Storytime. My name is Natasha and I'm joining you on behalf of the Saskatoon Public Library from my backyard, which is located in Tree Six Territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis. Today I have a bunch of books for you that are science books, but they're special science books because they are, uh, they either use beautiful pictures or stories to tell you some facts and things about animals. And before we do that, we're going to sing the Hello Friends song. And it goes like this. Hello, friends, time, stay. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. And thank you for joining me. Now let's get started on our first book. So this book is called Fur, Feather, Fin, All of Us Are Kin. And it's written by Diane Lang and illustrated by Stephanie Liberis. Look at that, I think this is a tidal pool, which is a little area that catches seawater or ocean water and supports a very special types of animals. All animals on earth are kin, while well, not the same outside or in. Some we stroke with loving hand and some we don't yet understand. But we're all linked in families with variations such as these. Mammals. I see a bear, a cat, muxox, milk to drink and furry hide. Mammals keep warm from inside. Their babies are not hatched, they're born. No matter where their fur is worn, and all need a parent when they're new. Do you know what kind of creature this is? It's a possum, yeah? And a whale. And look at these mammals. There's very special mammals on the next page. Can you think of any other mammals? Let's see. Like humans. Yeah, we're mammals too. All of these babies need somebody when they're new to love and take care of them. Did you know humans were mammals? Birds. Feathers keep birds warm and dry, giving them the shape to fly. And here we have a beautiful bird. This bird is called a loon. Sometimes we see these on the river in Saskatoon. I've seen them here before. Oh, and look at the baby loons. They make a really beautiful sound, loons. Some will soar, some probe the sand. Flightless ones live life on land. Some seek nectar in each bloom. That's true, some birds are pollinators. And some who hunt will watch and then zoom. It's a snowy owl and it's hunting. Snowy owls are very fast when they go zoom. Amphibians. Do you know what, what amphibians are? Can you guess? There's one that usually comes to mind really fast. A toad or a frog. Yeah, those are amphibians. Changing body, smooth, moist skin. That is an amphibian. Metamorphosis, the road for changing tadpole 
into toad. That's true. Amphibians have a very special life cycle. They go through metamorphosis and they change from being little eggs to having wiggly little tails as tadpoles until they get into their adult form. Here's some pictures of that. Or salamander. Or frog or newt. At the end, a whole new suit. Each of these had the same life cycle. Reptiles. Reptiles' dry and scaly skin keeps the warmth from outside in. Snakes and lizards seek the sun as basking turtles long have done. That might be a gila monster, a turtle. Some have smooth and graceful glides. Ooh, a snake. Some run or climb or dig to hide. That's what this reptile is doing. It's hiding from the roadrunner by hiding in the sand. Anthropods. Anthropods have hard outer shells, jointed legs, and varied lives. Some will live beneath the seas, while others lightly ride the breeze. From insects chewing on a stem, the ants chewing. to spiders who are eating them. That spider caught lunch. Fish. Fish have bones plus gills to breathe. Oxygen from where it's wet. Some have shapes somewhat alike, like salmon, trout, or catfish or pike. And here's the pike at the end. But some are shaped a different way, such as seahorse, eel, look at this eel, looks like it's gonna jump my hand, ah! or stingray. It's a very unique shape. Water dwellers. More water dwellers live offshore in tidal pools on ocean floors. Some cling to rocks while some float free on our sandy, salty family with tentacles or fins or spines. Life underwater intertwines. That looks like a deep sea battle to me. Detrivores. Detrivores, so oft forgotten, dine on things both dead and rotten. Worms and bugs. Worms and bugs make their dessert of rot into the riches of dirt underground or deep in the bark. That's how composting works. Detrivores break down food and turn it into soil. There's a picture of it right here, breaking down an apple. They're the heroes of the damp and dark. I'd say so. From lofty height to humble base. Every creature has a place. As well as needs like food, fresh air, a place of safety, nest or lair. The beavers.
And while we're different here on earth, in eating, moving, and giving birth, common things make us complete. The seahorse. Seahorses give birth in a really cool way. Minds that work and hearts that beat. And look, I think this was the picture from before. I think these are the kids looking in the tidal pool. That's a good way of knowing what a tidal pool looks like. Because you can tell the ocean water will come up and cover that. And then when it goes back, water gets trapped and so do some creatures and they live in the tidal pool. It's a special habitat. And another thing that makes this an, a first science book is these are these last pages here because they tell you all the definitions of the words, the families, like amphibian and reptile. And they tell you a little bit more about how we can protect animals' habitats. What a beautiful book. I feel like I've learned a lot about animal families and I hope you have too. All right. I think we have just enough time for the last book. Uh, we're getting close though. So here it is. This book is a book that has special nature words. It tells us the names of very unique places that exist in nature. And it is called Most of the Better Natural Things in the World. And it's by Dave Edgars and Angel Chang. And while we're reading it, I want you to keep your eye out for this tiger because I'm trying to figure out what he's up to. Oh, there's a crow saying hello. This book is special in that it doesn't quite have a story, but it has beautiful pictures that go with the places. So here's a beautiful picture of a step. Step. Gorge. And there's that tiger in the gorge. What's on his back? Hmm. Valley. Plain. Loud forest. What is on the tiger's back? It's yellow. Fjord. <laughs> 